Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to install Pacemaker in Linux CentOS 7 for SQL Server high availability. In Windows, we were using Microsoft uh, Clustering Services in order to accomplish the same thing. Pacemaker is an open source high availability resource manager software that is used to um, build the high availability in, uh, in the clustering environment in different computers. Um, again, the steps are the same. Just in Linux, we need to do everything uh, on command-based. And uh, in Windows, we have graphic user interface to work with. But steps are almost the same. So first step, uh, just like in Windows, uh, we prepare our cluster nodes first. So in Linux, it's the same thing, that I have two nodes cluster, node one and node two. So I'll validate the node's IP address, whether the, the network setting is right, the static IP is all set. And um, in Windows, we were doing the same thing. Uh, number two, just for this testing purposes, this installation, uh, we will uh, basically enable firewall uh, later on uh, in order for us to make this as a production environment. But for th this installation and demo purposes, I am going to disable firewall and SE Linux, um, and uh, then we will complete the installation and then we will open the firewall uh, ports that's required. Number three, installing Pacemaker. Uh, the software will need to install on every node. Uh, and then we will configure cluster user. Um, just like in Windows, uh, you have um, a service account that runs the clustering services. In Linux, we have a user called HA Cluster. You can actually have a different user. I'm just using HA Cluster for this demo purposes, um, high availability cluster. So we will configure that, and then uh, we will start and enable our pacemaker services once we configure um, our HA cluster. Adding the members nodes to the cluster, remember in Windows we used to add uh, the nodes once we have prepared the nodes, and we'll add into the cluster, uh, make sure that it validates against um, all those nodes, all the validation is successful. If there is any issue, it'll show us issue, we'll have to, uh, um, we'll have to fix the issue, and then add the node back into the cluster. Uh, number seven, creating and starting cluster. Then we'll create our um, virtual name of our cluster in Linux, and we will start our cluster there. Number eight, uh, configuring uh, cluster resources, just like we do configure cluster resources in Windows, that cluster IP address, and any service that is going to run on the, on the cluster, we will configure that. In this particular demo, um, I am actually configuring Apache services, HTTPD, just to test the failover cluster because a high availability, SQL Server high availability um, resource will create in next video. Uh, if I would add that in this video, this video would be really long. So I just wanted to divide this uh, the, the video in two videos. Uh, part one and part two, this one is going to be just installing the pacemaker and installing the virtual IP, setting up the cluster, and then we will add our SQL Server high availability uh, cluster resource in next video. And then we'll uh, create constraints of the cluster resource. You remember working on Windows, we used to set up dependencies of the cluster like you know, uh, if this IP address didn't come online, don't bring the resource online. It's the same thing in Linux. We will, it's called constraints. So you will, you will set up constraint on each of each resource uh, uh, to come online, uh, basically in order or not come online if resource A is not available. Then we'll test our failover cluster. And uh, the technical steps are a bit more detailed. This, these are just the uh, high-level steps. So let's go ahead and perform our technical steps. So if you notice right here, I have Le TBS Linux Node 1 and I have TBS Linux Node 2. So the, these are the two nodes that I'm, I'm preparing to add into the cluster. I will add, uh, install the pacemaker on both nodes, just like we add in Windows. Uh, clustering services we we enabled um, we add those via window um, add and remove features just like that we need to add pacemaker on these two nodes and uh, after that you know we will uh, uh, take care of the rest of the steps so first step we wanted to do the validate the IP addresses let's let's go ahead and validate the IP address on node one IPA if you do that 
you will notice in my case I have the IP address of this node uh, 100 as you can see this is my Ethernet right here and let's go ahead and do the same thing on node 2 and the IP address of node 2 is 101 right here and this is the Ethernet of node 2 our next is that uh, we we are done right here these are the steps that uh, technical steps we're gonna uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to upload that in video description as well as on my website so you can just modify this uh, uh, the uh, the script up here based on your environment and uh, everything should work fine so next thing we wanted to do the um, installing the HTTPD again this is not required for SQL Server high availability this is just to check the, uh, the uh, failover of this current cluster so this is much easier quicker way to just see that whether our failover uh, our cluster uh, is working or not uh, if one nodes go down the other nodes will take care of the all the resources that are running on that uh, particular cluster so let's go ahead and install on both nodes yum install httpd and dash y is that um, if you wanted to if do, you don't put dash y there uh, it's going to ask you whether you wanted to install it or not and you have to uh, um, press y and enter there but uh, since i want to install it so i'll go ahead and um, just put dash y there so it won't ask me so let's go ahead and install on this one let's go ahead and install on this one as well all right this is completed next thing is we wanted to disable the SC Linux and firewall so let's uh, complete the SC Linux and then we will do the firewall we need to go in uh, sysconfig SC Linux and change that to disable right here so instead of enforcing we're gonna do it permissive And then save the file let's do the same thing here and save this file as well okay and let's disable the firewall on this system ctl you say let's stop the firewall first firewall d and then we will disable the firewall let's do the same thing on node one Disable the firewall. Okay, so that step is done. Now we will install the pacemaker on both nodes. Let's copy this command and install it on node one. And then we'll go ahead and start on node two as well. During the installation of this package, uh, it will create a username called HA Cluster. But uh, we need to do a little bit of configuration of HA Cluster. We need to reset the password for HA Cluster uh, user. 
on node 2, the pacemaker installation is completed. Let's wait for the node 1 as well. But we can go ahead and check whether uh, that HA cluster is that user is created. Actually, it's, it's completed on node 1, 2. Let's go ahead and run this. And right here is the user. Sorry. Let's do the same thing here. So. And right here is edge a cluster. So let's go ahead and set the reset the password. I would say set the password. You need to keep this uh, password in your um, notes because you will need it later. The same thing on node two. Okay, everything is done. Our next step is start and enable pacemaker services on both nodes. So we'll start the PSCSD services. Do it here. Paste it here. And enable them. That step is completed. Now, uh, just like in Windows, uh, we used to add the nodes that is going to be part of the cluster. So we'll go ahead in Linux, it's, it's the same thing. We will add the membership of the cluster using HA cluster username. Provide the password. All right, as you can see that uh, uh, TBS Linux node one is authorized, TB, TBX Linux node two is authorized as well. They, it, it, they are authorized, both nodes are authorized to become part of the cluster. So let me check the status. There is no cluster created. So let's go ahead, let me quickly Run this one here. All right, now we will create the cluster and we are going to run this command, PCS cluster, name of the cluster. In my case, it's gonna be Linux SQL cluster. And these are the two nodes, uh, TBS Linux node one and TBS Linux node two. So these are the nodes going to be in the cluster named Linux SQL cluster. You can run it on any node, really. As you can see, that is success. Let's go ahead and look at the, now view the configuration of our uh, cluster. We need to run this command. Let's run it on here. Let's see what happens. Sorry. As you can see right here, the cluster name is Linux SQL cluster and TBS node one, TBS node two. Configuration looks good. Now let's go ahead and start our uh, cluster services. I'll go ahead and run it on two. PCS cluster start all.
Now I'm starting the cluster. Let's check the status of the cluster. Sorry. So as you can see that um, TBS Node 2 is online and TBS Linux Node 1 is both online. Let me see, run this command. Okay. Enable. You don't need to run on on both, really, but I just wanted to show you since uh, so the TBS Linux node one cluster is enabled uh, on both nodes. Let's take a look on the next step. Configure the resource of the cluster. So now our cluster is created, uh, just like in Windows. Uh, we used to provide um, a virtual IP to the cluster, um, virtual cluster, cluster name. This is the same thing we're going to do, virtual IP. So virtual IP of the cluster, configure resources of the cluster. So this is the, this is the command we're going to use to configure the virtual IP of the cluster. PCS resource, create virtual IP. IP address in my case is 102. This is the cluster IP and network mask is 24 and by using uh, the operation monitor and the interval is 60 that means every one minute it will check for the uh, for monitoring purposes all right let's go ahead and check the status As you can see right now, we have two nodes configured, one resource configured, and cluster is online, and virtual IP is stopped, but we have to start that virtual IP. Right now it's stopped state, we'll see, we'll enable it later, we need to run some commands in order to start the IP. Let's go ahead and um, configure the, the second resource, uh, Apache services, uh, right here. Again, this is uh, just to check the high availability of the cluster. We'll fail over the cluster and then check whether uh, all the resources that is on one node get stopped and taken care by the other node. All right, we need to use the um, it configuration option dash force. Because it's not liking the configuration word there. And as you can see, this is, it says uh, allowed option is um, just the uh, config file something like that but uh, if we wanted to give it our own name we're gonna have to force it so this is what we did and um, our next step is check the status again to see if the resources are configured right and you will notice that both resources are offline state so let's do it go ahead and uh, PCS status check the status again and see right here 
we configure two resources, virtual IP and HTTPD, and both are in stop state. Now, let's bring them online. We have to run some commands, and uh, we have to configure the constraint before we bring them online. So our first constraint is our, um, we have to set our constraint with our virtual IP, SQL, um, the virtual IP that we just created, the HTTPD services. And we need to set up the properties. Because if you check without the parameters, you will see that it's set to infinity. And this is wrong. This is one of the issue that I had that I just misspelled the stickiness. So this is what we need, resource stickiness. So let's go move on to our next step. <clears throat> and let's check uh, if the resources have come online. All right, as you, as you can see, the virtual IP has started and HTTPD services has stopped, uh, started. So let's see what, what is our next step. And our next step is check the virtual IP on active node. So IPA, let's see that if our virtual IP is here. And we're going to run it on node one because that is our active active node. All right, as you can see right here, this is our cluster virtual IP. So now we need to create an HTML, uh, just the index, um, write something, a page, and then we will uh, check our failover. So. I want to run this command right here and say I am TBS Linux node one and just save it. And run the same thing, but we will change this the text here. Note to save this one as well. Now it says that uh, let's go ahead our um, test our failover. Let's view the current setting. Uh, we will open a browser. And we will type the address of our cluster. So one nine two dot. So our cluster IP address is one two. So as you can see, it says I am TBS Linux node one. So right now our active node is TBS Linux node one. So now let's test the failover. We'll keep the browser right there, and to test the failover, we need to run this command, we will stop the cluster services on node one and see if the node two has taken care of all the resources. So stopping the services on TBS Linux node one, once it's stopped, let's refresh this. As you can see, it's changed. I am TBS Linux node two. So our failover works. Uh, absolutely fine. Our next video is going to be installing the SQL Server high availability on these nodes and then we will test the failover of SQL Server high availability. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching.